Welcome to today's episode of the x Rad Show, the talk show that gets you talking on the Xanarmonium Network live from New York City, also known as the Zan and Ann Show on a Wednesday. I'm Sandra Gibb. And I'm Andrea K. Oh, yes, three on today's show, the very white hot topics. Uh, and in part two, Julio Rivera from Reactionary Times joins us. More to come in a mere moment. So you can interact with us. You can join us on the live feed, which is around the video. You can uh, comment and we will endeavor to involve you in the conversation if it's, if it's not too dirty, of course. Um, and you will be able to uh, have the opportunity later on to uh, voice your opinions and call us on a Facebook live call. We have all the mod cons here. Welcome back to the show, Andrea. How is the world with you? Uh, well, things are a little bit better with me right now because we actually got a little bit of sunshine peeking through. Um, I don't know how anybody ever lives in Seattle or, you know, like Portland up there with all those great guys because it just makes me cranky pants. I'm always in a better mood when it's sunshiny. How are things with you? Um, I I am pretty good. Um, I I need the sunshine too. Um, and and in the in the days when we do have sunshine, I I make myself sit outside. I I have I have like a yard. Um, and and I sit outside in the yard and just get some daylight because I think that um, vitamin D makes a huge difference, uh, not just to your skin because as you can see, you know I'm. I'm, I'm only 18 and my skin is wonderful, haha. Ha. Uh, but it also makes a difference to your mental health, I think, too, to get more sunlight. Well, it definitely does. You know, it's, you know, sunlight's more than just to fight off the rickets. You know, I mean, do people still get rickets? Um, I don't know. Maybe people in the live feed can tell us uh, if people <laughs> still get uh, the rickets. I, I personally don't um, because I take my anti-ricket medication uh, regularly. Uh, so I don't, but I'm sure they do. What is your anti-ricket medication? My anti-ricket medication is usually a Cosmo. Uh, mine is uh, mine is usually um, a black Russian. And no, that's not a racial statement or nothing to do with the you know the BS the Dem Democrats are spouting right now. It's actually vodka, Tia Maria, and Coke, and and a couple of those. And I'm everybody's baby. <laughs> oh, Maria! I think you're the only person I know who drinks Tia Maria. Oh, I don't. And I've never not been in a Russian. Not on its not on its own, because uh, in this country we have a, a drink called the White Russian, and as mo most of you probably yeah. know by now, I was raised um, for a lot of my formative years in the UK, and they have this drink called the Black Russian, and and it's 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 kind of like a White Russian, but instead of the milk, you put uh, Coca Cola in it, and uh, and hope for the best. But I never get the proportions right. You know, it's like ha three quarters vodka, um, a quart of Tia Maria, and then you just top it up with a little bit of Coke. So it's so it's obviously very kind of alcoholic, but um, you know. It's, it, it gets you drunk, so who cares? It's all the job, right? Cure yeah. Crickets, and then, all right, we're good. Yeah, uh, but no, in all seriousness, um, I... My sister has been on this kind of like healthy living thing for, for quite a few years. And a lot of the stuff you used to choose to tell me, I used to really poo poo. Um, but one of the things she told me about was something called echinacea. Um, and, you know, I was like, you know, what the echinacea is that? Um, but I've been taking that for a year now and, and, and I haven't had a cold in that, in that period of time. Um, 
but what I, Akinesh actually does it, it does lots of things and it boosts your immune system too. Um, but I think a lot of these things with regards to being healthy, um, you know, says, says me, because I go to the gym every day. I don't know who this gym is, but um, I definitely think that all of the little things you do make up, uh, kind of uh, add to uh, how healthy you are. because that was kind of a hot thing for a while you know um people were people were taking that um kind of like melatonin was a hot thing for a while you right. know to help you sleep so that people would get more sleep so things there's things like these things kind of come and go with fads so but i definitely i should i should give that echinacea a try because i give it one or two colds a year and man they just really get me good. Oh. Me too. I, I, I call it the man flu and people are like, what's the difference? And I'm like, well, because I'm a man, it's the man flu. But don't, have you noticed that the women will, you know, go and get their flu meds and they'll live with it. But men have to complain. You know, they have to kind of talk about it uh, like it like it makes it go away quicker. Oh, I'm dying. What's wrong with you? Is it cancer? No, I have the flu. I mean, it's ridiculous. You're worse than babies. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, I'm probably different to most men, but I don't have a very high pain threshold. Uh, but when I'm sick, I'm sick and I want to be left alone. And if you're coming to see me when I'm sick, you know, you got to bring pizza or, or you know, chicken soup. Uh, but, but the watery kind, not the creamy kind. And, um, you know, you kind of really know what you want uh, when you're sick. Do you know what I mean? Well, I'm kind of old school Cajun. When I'm sick, I need some extra spicy Popeyes. Okay, we gotta we gotta blow your head off. Wow. Where it comes from. Okay, that's that's the way we cure things. We like the extra spicy. You got the combination of fried foods with the extra spicy. That's what you need with a side of some Godiva truffles. That's my old school home medicine. Well, I have a friend in London who's Bangladeshi, um, or his, his parents are from Bangladesh. Um, and whenever I used to get sick, I knew him from work. He would actually bring me around um, a curry, and the curry uh, curry is supposed to be medicinal. Um, it, you know, the ideology in, in some cultures is that, that it's medicinal. But I love curry. Um, but it would always kind of like, you know, clear my head. You know, make me feel better and make me wanna, um, you know, kind of get on with life rather than oh, I'm gonna die today kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I'll have to try that next time I get to get a cold. Absolutely. I just want to um, say a quick hello uh, to uh, to the people that are in the live feed because because I kind of think that when they feel left out they uh, you know they start talking about uh, you know global warming and uh, who's, who's giving away cheap pizza uh, and things and things like that. Uh, <laughs> just tell me if you know who's global warming dang it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, hey to Joe, hey to Shyster, hey to CV, uh, welcome to Martha, um, hi to some beautiful lady called Andrea K. I don't know if she's any relation to you. Um, hello to uh, Chet um, from Freedom on Deck, who's going to be my co-host tomorrow night. Um, hi to, I really have to get glasses because I'm always squinting to do this. Hi to Dave, uh, welcome, welcome back to the show. I'm trying to cl click like as I go along too. Um, hi to Zal. Welcome Zal. I hope you are good. Yes, welcome to Xander World, but it's Zan and, um, it's Zan and Ander World on a Wednesday. Um, so, so there we go. Um, hello to, um, who else can I see? Uh, to, uh, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Um, Balul. Uh, welcome to the show, Balul. I hope I pronounced your show, your name, uh, correctly, because uh, I know I hate it when people call me Alexander. I like my name um, uh, pronounced properly. Do you get called Andrea sometimes? I do, but you know what? I actually don't mind that at all. I get called Andrea, Andrea, Andrea. You know, I'm cool with all of it. You know, as long as people are giving me attention, baby. Yeah, as long as they're not calling me uh, late for my dinner. Uh, and it's pizza. I really don't care. Honestly, we're not being sponsored by Papa John's today. Uh, I'm just a, a pizza addict. So I want to jump into the first topic, uh, which which you kind of alerted me to today when we had our uh, production uh, meeting for the show. Uh, and that was the fact that uh, musician and alternative icon Courtney Love um, has been blasting um, and quite appropriately too, anti-Donald Trump Women's March leader um, and 
I'll try and be polite for the first, for the introduction. Uh, Muslim activist Linda Sarsour calling her a vile disgrace to women and all mankind. In a message on social media today, she said, you're a vile disgrace to women and all mankind. Um, Linda Sarsour uh, posted, love the former partner of late Nirvana musician Kurt Cobain before engaging in an argument with, uh, with Linda. Uh, Sarsour and um, Women's uh, March social media had uh, Alyssa Klein, uh, who said, Linda is the kindest, most generous, incredible woman I know. Um, she makes me proud to be a woman. I am forever proud to be her sister, although she supports ISIS. Uh, prompting, uh, prompting love to reply, well, that's a shame. Count me out with anything else related to her. She's a fraud. Uh, Sarsour quickly responded to Love's post, commenting, um, that um, Courtney was trying to make a name for herself among Trump supporters, I guess. Well, let me break this to you, Linda. We uh, have known who Courtney Love is for some years now. Uh, so denying a woman justice who was brutally beaten, Sasser, um said, a prominent uh, Palestinian activist who has frequently praised Sharia law uh, and Saudi Arabia attempting to convince the public that women's rights in the Middle East are better uh, than the United States. Don't even get me started on female genital mutilation. Um, and uh, Sasser also expressed her desire to take, uh, excuse my terminology because I am quoting, the vaginas away uh, from um, Ayan Hirsi Ali, uh, an ex-Muslim activist, and uh, someone that both Andrea and I respect immensely, uh, Brigitte uh, Gabriel from Act America, um, um, a liar as a, a victim of uh, female genital mutilation. Um, I wish I could take their vaginas away, Sarsour declared, uh, referencing both of these ladies um, for their criticism of Islam. They don't deserve to be women. Um, according to Alex Van Ness, the uh, director for the Middle East uh, Peace and Security Project, uh, Sasa also has a long is history of criticizing Israel that crosses the line into anti-terrorism and terrorism sympathizing. She supports the discriminatory and ter terrified BDS movement and has claimed nothing is creepier than Zionism. Um, so, first of all, you know, I, the first thing I did before I kind of did any work on this story, as, as I'm sure you do as, as a reputable journalist, I went to look at the tweets and and it was clear from the tweets um, that Saucer had jumped on this um, from the perspective of it being um, anti-Muslim when Islam wasn't even mentioned. Well, no, of course not. But see, that's always the play. That's the way they bully you into submission. And, that's, it, and, it, and isn't that what the left does, liberals and Democrats? Yeah. That's why they're the big partners. That's why liberals, liberal Democrats and... Um, Marxist Democrats and Marxist Sharia Muslims are the perfect partners together. They use the same tactics. Their end goal is the same. It's about a centralized government of complete control over its citizens. And, you know, they're both using the same tactics. I mean, here you've got a woman referring to Linda Sarsour as a kind-hearted pro-woman. Yeah. When, you know, the statement Linda Sarsour made about Brigitte Gabriel and uh, Hirsi Ali is so perfect as the perfect example of liberalism today because right. you're claimed to be the party of women when they when the statement is inciting violence against women how in the world can we have any american woman stand on a stage in washington dc on inauguration day after a free and fair election in the land of the free thanks to the home of the brave and stand there with a woman who supports an ideology that subjugates women, cuts off little girls' genitals, marries them off as child brides, doesn't allow women any rights. It's insane. It's it, literally insane. And what it totally is ins insane is, you know, I, I hate to say this, but the first thing that this reminded me of, you know, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I, I gave back my fag badge a long time ago, but the really the gay gay community are really going to kick me out for saying this, but it was like, it was like the gay community all over again, you know, all of these leftist um, members, uh, you know, uh, pockets of society. That's the first thing that they do. They change the narrative um, to suit. Um, their their commentary um, and and make it about something that it isn't.
Um, because there's no way she was, you know, the, the, the whole thing that this was about was that um, some, um, some, some woman had been attacked who happened to be Muslim, um, but the facts around it were not very clear. But right away, Satsor um, insisted that it was because she was a Muslim. So if I go out in the street now and I get attacked, it's clearly because I'm gay. It might just because they want my wallet or, you know, maybe they've watched my show. But, you know... You can't jump to that conclusion right away, because what does that say about your premise? Well, you know, the premise is really, it, this whole Islamophobia crap is just, it is the, it's just part of the same identity politics PC game that the left has been playing. If you want to enforce immigration laws, you hate brown people. If you want to, you know, welfare reform and make it transactional and have drug testing or make people have a job for it, you hate poor people. If you're pro-life, you hate women, but if you're pro-Sharia, evidently you love women. Yeah. It just doesn't make any sense. Uh, but it's really just all a tactic. I mean, right now, we, we are still, I don't even know if they finished burying the 22 women and young girls that were murdered by Islamists in a city that had protested uh, on behalf of refugees, calling anybody that didn't want Muslim refugees bigots. And what did the Muslim refugees do? They murdered 22 girls, and what's the response of liberals right. to um, push back against anybody who doesn't want refugees and anybody who speaks out against Islamic terror? And, and you know, really, we got to get a handle on this political correctness around that uh, quote religion, which I say is a political ideology, because we're you know, hat tip to Courtney Love for pushing back against yeah. this, although she she. She still really didn't, though, because she said, I didn't say anything about Islam. I didn't say anything about being Muslim. Well, why not? Why are we still afraid to go there? Right. Well, I, I don't think that we should because, you know, here's the thing, um, you know, I have to say uh, this this that happened in Portland um, just a few days ago uh, where those two guys, uh, the, those two guys were killed for, dis for, for defending those two women um, that were um, that were wearing uh, hijabs. That, that was, to me, that was absolutely disgusting, you know? Uh, it doesn't make it right that someone has been attacked, and if they're attacked because they're Muslim, it, it you know, it, it's, it's bad. And we would speak out against that regardless, wouldn't we, Andrea? Well, I speak out against um, any form of violence or any form of, you know, attack. You know, I mean, that's, you know, to, to, that's one of the reasons why I think hate crime legislation and hate speech is so stupid, because every crime is, is based in hate. Yes. So who, who the victim is. Yeah. Um, and, you know, certainly Muslims are in the receiving end of Islamic terror and murdered as well. That does not, however, excuse the, quote, moderates within the Islam religion, if we're still going to call it religion, to not do their part to stop it. Because when their response is to do like Linda Sarsour after a terrorist attack and caution against Islamophobia and demand refugees and demand rights for immigrants, I got a problem with that. Yeah. So we are, as, as a society and as a government, more concerned with the feelings of the moderates who aren't doing anything to help than they are in protecting citizens from Islamic terror, that's a problem. Right now you got that dopey London mayor, he's more concerned with stopping Trump from coming over to Great Britain than he is from stopping terrorists from coming in. Exactly. And but but that's, do, kind of here. that's the mindset we have here. But isn't it clear, Andrea, that that is what is causing the problem? You know, every time the incidents of this elk happen, um, there are people that they've been aware of, there are people that have been on terrorists, and the reason they don't do anything about it is because they don't want to offend. You know, I, I want to swear now, but I'm not going to. Screw offense. If we have to offend people to stop innocent lives being taken, then so be it. You know, I've used this example already this week. It's like the people that complain about going on a plane. Why should I have to stand around and wait for two hours to be checked? Well, because there are people uh, in this day and age that want to blow up airplanes with you on it. So if it's a, if it's the price you pay uh, to get on the plane and, and get to your destination safely, is that you have to take off your socks and shoes and do the things that they want you to do. Do it or don't fly. You know, if you want to live in this country, then there is a... An, an, an element of compliance. And if you get, let's face it, how, how much did we piss and whine when, when Obama was in the, in the White House for eight years and screwed us with the IRS, had us on watch lists, um, and, and, and all of this? You know, that, that was all acceptable. So how come that's acceptable, but it's not acceptable to monitor people that are on watch lists? Well, yeah, I mean, it's like, 
you know, um, in order to not offend moderate Muslims and not do and not profile, which we should. I mean, not all mo Muslims are, are terrorists, but all terrorists right now that we're dealing with are Muslims. Yes. File. We're not allowed to investigate mosques. We're not allowed to pull somebody out of, out of line going through the TSA whose name is Muhammad. So to avoid seemingly like we're profiling or to avoid hurting some Muslim feelings, we're going to, you know, frisk uh, up and down some 95-year-old lady who grew up in Des Moines, Iowa. You know, yeah. who, you know, was a descendant from, you know, Norway or whatever. I mean, it's insane. And, you know, and what we need to do, in my opinion, is we need to push back against that. We need to tell the moderate Muslims, if you don't like being, get, if you don't like getting a hairy eyeball from somebody in security, you don't like people looking at you crossways, get angry at the people that are, that are putting you in yes. that position and the radicals in your midst. Don't get angry at me. If there was a gang, if there were gangs around the world of little blonde sorority girls out of LSU committing acts of terror, I would expect to get the hairy eyeball everywhere I went. Right. And I wouldn't get angry at the people looking at me suspiciously. I'd get angry at the other blonde girls who put me in that position. Exactly. And but what we need to do is I think that we need to start making it extremely uncomfortable for the moderates, not, not tiptoeing around their feelings, because all that's doing is leaving dead bodies in the streets. I, I agree with you 200%. And, you know, my dad, God rest his soul, you know, he, uh, he, he's been dead for like 16 years now. But he said, uh, you know, I remember distinctly him saying, and it got poo-pooed at the time when he said it, he said all this political correctness is going to get us into trouble. Because kowtowing, if you go and live in a country where, where that country, um, the main religion of that country is not one that you've brought with you from your other country, of course you should be able to remain the religion that you are, but don't try and change everything around you. You know that the ideology is to assimilate, but but assimilation doesn't mean giving up everything you believe, um, but it doesn't mean trying to enforce change on those around you. Well, the fact that there there is no assimilation, and that's been proven with Europe, the fact that they, they are setting up shadow governments with Sharia per, is proof that it is a political ideology with a religious component. It's kind of like um, global warming is a religion for some people. It's like being vegan uh, is, is a religion for some people. That is their religion. And so to me, it's a political ideology that's being worshipped. And it, and really, that would be the key to solving the entire mess would be. And Rick Santorum was the only one of the Republican Party in the primaries who suggested it. He said, we need to declare them a political ideology. And in doing so, we can free up our investigative agencies and our law enforcement to actually do their jobs. Otherwise, I'm not really sure how we defeat it because that's how they're winning. They're using our religious freedoms against us. That's how the courts are, are you know, stopping immigration policies that we keep them out. That's how law enforcement is not able to go in there hiding in mosques and hiding, uh, you know, and they're able to use um, forcing their Sharia on us in school systems and otherwise. And it's all based upon the false religious protections. Yeah, I absolutely agree. But you know, let's let's turn this around and um, let's really blow people's minds. Let's say um, the people that were perpetrating these things were Christians. What 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 response would there be then, Andrea? Well, I mean, the fact is, is Christianity has already been labeled uh, a hateful religion. Uh, you know that that's been in play for a long time now. You know they uh, they that's why they were, in my opinion, running stings on Christian bakeries because they wanted to catch a Christian baker who, who didn't want to bake a cake. Oh, see, you're not going to bake a cake for the for, uh, for a gay wedding? See, Christians are haters. Oh, little sisters of the poor, you don't want to pay for contraception for women? You're a hater. That's what the whole thing was with that, um, that sleazy gal. What was her name that went before Congress? Oh. The gal was spending $1,000 a month in contraception. Hillary Clinton? And, yeah, she looked like... Um, uh, she looked like that singer out of out of London. She was really unattractive. She went she went to Georgetown, and she went you know complaining that you know she you know contraception should be a right because you know I can't remember her name. Um, but Christianity, we, you know, we've been accused of, of being haters now for a long time. So if if you can if you can declare one religion, why are we tiptoeing around Islam, which is murdering people? We're tiptoeing around them. Because we don't want to appear like like we're mean or hateful towards them. Meanwhile, you can say anything you want and run a Christian into the ground. And Christians are not celebrating Easter through suicide vests, putting suicide vests on little kids or blowing up concerts. 
Well, you know, uh, I'll tell you for why, because over the last 25 years, we've allowed this climate to be built where we're not allowed to offend anybody. And I'm here to tell you, I don't care if I offend, we offend you. My intentions are very pure. My intentions are to make a difference. And if my commentary offends you, then, then go and listen to uh, another show. I can't even think of an example. There are some people, it is okay to offend one group, and that's conservative Christians. It's okay to offend them. We're of not course. allowed to have feelings. Our feelings don't matter. We are being completely marginalized. We've been declared a uh, religion in a, in a political movement of hate. I mean, you look at, you look at this, you know, uh, Ann Coulter is not allowed to speak on a college no. campus, but Linda Sarsour is. Yeah. What is it's... It? It's ridiculous, but 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 this 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 climate, you know, I you know I've mentioned a couple of times on this show, um, there was something on Twitter about that was accusing Donald Trump of starting the birther movement, and all I said was, BS. You know, uh, Hillary's people started the birther movement in her first bid to become president. So Joy Ann Reed, you know, um, CNN bitch bitch uh, em impresario, comes and tells me I'm a racist for saying that, and I'm like, wait a minute, let's rewind. What did race have to do with saying that Hillary Clinton started the birther movement and not Donald Trump? So she she then instigated um, people to attack me on Twitter. And I mean, I mean you know, I'm so thick skinned. I really don't care. I, I just, you know, I just kind of deleted it all. Um, but while we've got people in prominent positions that are doing these things, it's never going to change. And I'm glad Courtney Love stood up to her today because it's exactly what was needed. She's getting too big for her britches. She thinks she's untouchable. Uh, I'm not suggesting by any, you know, stretch of the imagination that anybody should do anything to her, but stand up to this woman and tell her what you think. She is an absolute, you know, as I, I know some Muslims and some have even said it on the show that she does not do Islam any favors. And when you can sit there with your finger, with your waggly finger for ISIS in a picture, I don't even want you on Twitter. If you support ISIS, you should not be allowed on Twitter. Sorry. Absolutely. We don't allow child pornography uh, across the airwaves. We need to treat you. What would happen if you were to go and spray paint or put up a swastika somewhere? Can you imagine what would be done to you? Yeah. I, I don't know the legalities of that, but you would clearly be shunned and you'd have no place in American society. Just like you can't walk around in a, in a white hood and a KKK hood. So why are we allowing these images? The burqa, the hijab, the ISIS flag, anything related to Sharia should be symbols that should be illegal just like uh, you will be treated in the same way as the swastika or the KKK hood. Agreed. It, 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 um, it, you only have to look at her timeline. I mean, she, she says that she loves the gays now, and Islam loves the gays. Now, I, I must I, you know, I really want to apologize to my friends who happen to be Muslim, who love me regardless. Um, but, but the ideology with Muslim, and, and there is some, some like, uh, level of this with Christianity, too, that some people have taken this um, and used it. You know, they're throwing gay people off roofs um, in, in Saudi Arabia uh, just for being gay. Uh, Hillary is quite happy to take their money. So, so how does that say that Islam loves gay people? You know, you could come back. Go ahead. That's the key. You know, they, they are instructed to lie in order, you know, to further their caliphate. That's all that is. Yeah, and it's and it's most concerning because if you're stupid enough to to believe that uh, and, and to take it in and join this stupid women's march with a vagina on your head, I mean, you know, no disrespect, but what does what does that do for women to be walking around with a symbol of a vagina on your head? What does that do for women's rights? <laughs> it doesn't do anything, particularly since this is the same party that tries to tell us at the same time that there's no such thing as gender. That your sexuality is determined at birth in terms of whether or not you're gay or straight. Um, you don't have any choice in that, but you have the choice of whether or not you're a man or a woman. I mean, again, they're just completely off the rails. You, they think your sexuality is fixed at birth, and it may or may not, although there's been no science to define it either way. But we do know that your sex is determined at birth. Me, and these are the same people that want to tell us that, you know, um, Christianity is evil and hate-filled, but Islam is love. Well... I just, uh, I just, I don't know. I, I'm just, I'm just at a loss. But, but what I'm most disappointed about is that, is that people are buying it. Um, you know, there are, uh, there are those among us um, that can see through this uh, and will not stand for it. But you know, I, I want to move on to another topic. But I want to say, good for you, Courtney Love. Good for you for standing up. Uh, you know, uh, 
to to this to this BS. Because you know she collected money on the basis of this, don't you? Oh, of course. Heck yes, she did. Yeah. So so if you can't see through that, you know, uh, give me give me some money because this was anti-Muslim hate. We don't even know that it was that. The police don't even know uh, what it was. You know, the woman is supposed to have been fighting with someone, and if it was Muslim hate, yeah, that's absolutely disgusting. Um, but why can't why why do we have to have it as a Muslim hate crime? Why can't it just be a, a hate crime? Why can't it just be a crime? For God's sake, you know, everything has to be so politicized, and and this woman um, offends so many people. But you know, I want to say one thing before we move on, uh, and I quote Brig Brigitte Gabriel a lot because I have a lot of respect for her. Um, you know, her her point in all of this is just so um, is so um, impeccably um, correct when she says, you know. The peaceful majority are irrelevant. She's absolutely right. It's not them that fly planes into buildings. It's not them that uh, drive trucks into markets at Christmas. It's not them that slip people's throats on London Bridge. It's the terrorists that do that. It's the ra radicalized ones. It wasn't that. It wasn't the the Germans in Nazi Germany that were killing people. It was the Nazis. But still, the peaceful majority are irrelevant. And if we allow ourselves to continue be, to be sucked in um, to this political correctness crap uh, who's to say you're not going to be the next one with your throat slit well yeah um, you know I think we need to I think we need to, I love that quote from Brigitte Gabriel as well and I love that smackdown that she did at that gal at that conference but I think at this point I think we need to take it to the next level and say that they're irrelevant it, um, that they're I think they're relevant in the sense that um, they're not a part of the problem, but they're not a part of the solution. And the, and the solution involves going around them instead of protecting them. It does. Protect feelings. It absolutely does. Uh, I want to. I want to change. Uh, I want to change um, direction here. I really want to go and have a shower after I've talked about uh, Linda Sasar and her bigotry for twenty minutes. But I have to wait till after show for that because you really don't want to see me. Uh, you know, taking a shower. Uh, big hose in the back garden. You know what it's like. And so there's been a lot going on today um, with regards to uh, Comey uh, and, you know, comments with regards to how ridiculous his statements uh, have been oh. already. Um, which I really want to come on to in a minute, but I was interested that, you know, about the talk about, um, you know, Assistant Attorney General Christopher Ray um, basically speaking at the press conference of the Justice Department uh, uh, and basically, uh, the announcement comes a day before that came yesterday with regards to uh, possibly Christopher Ray taking over um, and Comey's anticipated Thursday morning testimony in front of the Senate Intelligence Committee about his firing and conversations with the president about the Russia probe. I just see this picture of Putin with a spatula in his in his hand when they see when I hear the terminology. The Russian probe. Uh, the announcement is clearly an effort to distract. From our Senate hearings today and tomorrow, Senator Mark Warner uh, said, uh, Harvard Law Professor Jack Goldsmith, who worked with Ray, the DOJ called Ray smart, serious and professional in a statement, uh, though he pointed out that Ray's lack of experience of his two predecessors, uh, Ray is a good choice, much better choice than any name previously floated around and a much better choice than expected. Uh, he expected Mr. Trump to make. Uh, Goldsmith wrote, I think Ray is qualified to be director of the FBI, a former DOJ official who worked with Ray uh, basically said he's a safe choice. Uh, the official said uh, Ray is a well-respected smart and has integrity, um, but expressed concerns about Ray's lack of management experience as he faces the task of helming an agency that is extremely difficult to run. Um, but let's face it. Comey did it for all that time, and we're now seeing how badly he actually did it. So uh, I just say, you know, let's give Ray an opportunity. What say you? Well, I say that it was a safe choice. I agree with that statement. Unfortunately, the intelligence community and the Justice Department community are a swamp in and of itself. And, um, you know, I would have liked to have seen an outsider brought in. I get that there are some areas of expertise there that it's nice if you've got somebody who came up through the ranks. But the problem is, is that the ranks stink. They're rank with odor and with the stench of the swamp. And when 96% of the campaign contributions coming out of that organization went to Hillary Clinton, we can see that it's a problem and for having true justice in America and having the government return to the people versus having a ruling class
class against the citizens. So it was a safe choice. Um, I'm not excited by it. No, I, I'm not sure that I am, but I just, um, I, this is the thing for me. I think uh, Trump is damned um, if he doesn't, damned if he doesn't. Uh, and oh. and someone's got to do the job. And, and, and you know, the other, if he doesn't choose someone pretty soon, they're going to be uh, accusing him uh, of, of inability uh, to do the job again. Um, but I just want, I want a functioning government. And I think that, um, you know, any suggestion that Comey was fired unfairly is absolutely ridiculous because, you know, just, just even just his actions of, of the past few months have, have been indicative of the fact that he should never have been doing the job anyway. The fact that he couldn't, you know, didn't do anything to Loretta Lynch, um, you know, all the stuff about, you know, surveilling, um, Donald Trump when he was a private citizen, you know, the, the list, the list is endless and we need, we need credibility and we haven't had that for the last eight years. Well, we have eight months of an investigation based on nothing and no probable cause to allow a Democrat sitting president to surveil uh, the opposition party's presidential candidate and his campaign. Eight months later, there's no evidence of any collusion or any wrongdoing. There were crimes that were committed since President Trump took office with the unmasking and, and with the leaks, and Comey would not investigate those leaks. And then he turns right around and leaks his own supposed memo that I don't believe the ink is even dried on. No. Because, because again, he's playing politics and he's got himself boxed into a corner because he leaked to the New York Times to imply that President Trump had obstructed justice, even though he apparently didn't think that 33,000 pieces of government property that were destroyed under subpoena was obstruction of justice. Now, he's going to leak it that Trump obstructed justice, even though... If that had happened, he has committed a felony for not reporting it. And then he even said before Congress that he wasn't pressured. So the guy is just an idiot. The statement that came out today proved that he had no business ever being an FBI director. Yep. Trump should have fired him day one. And he has no credibility. And I think that the statement being released today was a way to take the steam out of tomorrow's festivities. And we'll see what happens. But I think it ended up being a good day for Trump today. Absolutely. I'm going to bring on our guest uh, now, uh, who is Julio Rivera, a.k.a. the Conserver Rican. Uh, he is a direct, uh, director. He is editor in chief of um, Reactionary Times, uh, of which I am proud to be a contributor. He's a friend of the show and a friend of ours. And I'm just going to try and get him uh, on the line now. It's ringing. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Welcome to the X Men Show. Your life with myself and the fabulous and beautiful Andrea K. How is the world with you? It's fantastic. I feel like I talk to Andrea every day. I mean, but it's a great thing. It's a great thing. There's nothing wrong with that at all. So, how are you guys today? I I'm We're good. Awesome. Yeah, this We're... might be lucky, but 24 hours ago, Julio. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Every, every, everywhere I turn, I see Andrea K. No matter what it is, turn on the TV, turn on the radio. She's everywhere. She, she is. Uh, we, we thought she was going to be up for the job of uh, uh, director of the FBI, but she just hasn't got time for that. Isn't that right, Ed? Yeah, no. So I think I think she'll do a lot better just in media than, than that stupid job. I I do too. Uh, now I want to I want to get your um I want to before we before we move on. Well, that's one of the things we've just been talking about. Uh, we've just been talking about you know uh, Comey's pathetic behavior uh, and the fact that Ray has been fingered um, for the FBI director's job. Uh, apparently, I'm not supposed to use that term, but I just mean like he's been pointed out um, for that. Well, again, um, I'm sorry, Stephen. Again? Uh, Ray, W R A Y. Oh, okay. Uh, so I want to get your thoughts on that. Uh, let's talk first of all about um, how pathetic Comey is in all of this. Well, you know what? This is the this is the thing that I I, I say, right? Uh, he did not give his loyalty to the rule of law the entire time that he was there, and then for a lot of his career too. If you look back at a lot of the history and some of the things that he's investigated. And matters that were very obvious to the casual observer that he could have brought up charges against people like Hillary Clinton, and he failed to do so. I mean, yes. He investigated her twice, and he exonerated her twice in matters that basically anyone could have proved that she had broken the law. Exactly. So obviously there's something wrong there. Um, as far as him making this statement, it all seems like 
grandstanding based on the fact that we're basically going off of his feelings. He thinks that Donald Trump attempted to imply this. But there's no proof of any of that. It's ridiculous. It really is nonsense. Yeah, yeah. It kind of reminds me of this, uh, this, this, this BS term that's being used now. A source said, you know, it's like as soon as I hear that, I'm like, yeah, bring me facts, bring me evidence, um, and then, and exactly. then we can talk. Exactly. If there was a smoking talk. gun, don't you think we would have heard it by now? If there yeah. Was a recorded conversation. If there was an email, if there, if there was dead set proof that Trump made the declarative statement to him to end an investigation. Then you've got criminality. Then you have something. All yeah. you have here is obstruction, wasting congressional time. Where exactly. We should be working on tax reform and health care for this nonsense. Yeah, wasting uh, wasting congressional time and our taxpayer uh, dollars. Um, I just. Uh, I just kind of, I, I despair. You know, I even read something yesterday that the, the Democrats are secretly preparing papers to have uh, Donald Trump impeached. And I'm like, is it that second scoop of ice cream? Or, you know, what is it? Because because all of the things that they accuse Mr. Trump of are all pie in the sky. Pie and ice cream, did you get my link? Um, but, but there's nothing concrete uh, for them to say he should be impeached for. Exactly. They can't draft articles of impeachment. They can't articulate why they would have an impeach for. When they asked Diane Feinstein if she saw evidence, anything that was, you know, subst substantive of uh, yeah. Russian collusion with the Trump campaign, she found nothing. Maxine Waters, who runs around everywhere now because she's the desperate attention seeker, yeah. you know, going around with her megaphone yelling, Impeach Donald Trump! And all her nonsense. She has it. She's admitted that on television that there is no proof of Russian collusion with the Trump campaign. What are you impeaching him for? Yeah. You don't like his hair? Yeah. Yeah. Let, let's not go there, Julio. <laughs> because well, because yeah, 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 yeah. because let's yeah. because let's face it. Maxine Waters can't talk about anyone's hair, considering you know uh, she she's got the most uh, complicit wig line since since she's got that, James she's Brown. Got the weaviest hair in Congress. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, what say you? What say you, Andrea, um, about this uh, impeachment BS? Um, and and what, what can we pinpoint, apart from the two scoops um, and the fact that he puts up with no BS, um, what can he be impeached for? Well, you know, um, you, you know that there's no there, therefore impeachment. Um, that's what the Wasn't that wasn't that just the best? You know, I you know I I've been wanting to see uh, uh, Megyn Kelly slap down for long enough. Not not physically. So don't all you women right people be writing to Linda Sarsour to get on my back? Uh, but she really did deserve that verbal tongue lashing uh, from uh, from Vlad. Don't you agree, Julio? Oh yeah, most definitely. I mean, I, I'm I'm sick of this already. These, these phony this phony outrage. It's, it's nonsense. I mean, I, I think this. This is what I think is going to happen, right? I think that Comey's going to go there tomorrow, and he's going to basically make a fool of himself. I think that this is all about him trying to maximize his prospects post-government life, because I think now that he's been fired from the FBI, the probability of him ever getting another position is going to be difficult. But he is a, a, a figure of interest to a lot of people. And maybe there's a book deal behind this. Maybe his supposed memos will be transcribed into a, a fiction book, which is, looks like what he was trying to spin. When I read his statement today, 
It looked like something out of uh, a nonsensical fictional narrative. Yeah. You know, that I, there was an awkward silence between us what is this is he do writing his memoirs on speed dating or something probably like, what's an awkward silence mean are you gonna go ahead and convict somebody on awkward <laughs> silence james Comey is a joke i i think i think ultimately um there is no going back uh for comey's uh, credibility uh, and i don't think there should be because because this is the thing you know democrats are, are, are more than willing to uh comment on on assumption um but you know there's more evidence with comey with regards to how bad he's been at, at his job um than, than than anything else you know it's all stuff we know about uh, but but i don't know what it is with the democrats where they're more interested in what people have talked about you know like with mr trump they're more interested in what he said to people in a group of guys than the fact that that Bill Clinton has for the last 40 years um, been a rapist and and it's been covered up by his wife. Uh, Bill Cosby in, in in court this week. Now I don't hold truck with any of the things that he does, but why is Bill Cosby in court for these things and 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 Bill Clinton still walks free? Why how is that justice in America? I don't know. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that Bill Clinton is covered up by a deep state conspiracy. To go ahead and protect him because all the pieces were in place for his wife to become president listen trump was the wild card in all of this yeah that was the reason why obama appointed comey because he figured his legacy would be safe with comey as the fbi director turning a blind eye to all the lawlessness not only of the clans which he's shown a propensity to do over his career but also for everything that took place while he was president there was probably still open and active investigations there's a reason why there was a divide in the FBI, why the New York investigative office was going crazy because they had new evidence about, uh, I guess, the laptop from Anthony Weiner. And, you know, people think that Comey somehow, or the left tried to spin it, that Comey somehow did Trump a favor by reopening the case against Hillary Clinton right before Election Day. But you know what he also did? He did her the biggest favor ever by exonerating her and reclosing it Yes. With the weekend before the election, you know, on the horizon. So everybody went, okay, well, I guess the Hillary Clinton thing was nothing because the FBI re-looked into it. They went through it again with a fine-tooth comb. Somehow they missed the fact that she tampered with evidence by employing bleach bit yeah. to scrub her server. She should be in jail for that now. And then you look at somebody like Christian Saucier sitting there rotting in prison, unfortunately, yeah. for doing far less. Yeah. This is crazy on so many levels, Xander and Ann. It absolutely, it, it absolutely is. And, uh, and I, I, I live to be Hillary Clinton's prison pen pal. I really do. I live in hope that they're going to put her in prison and Obama too, because I would love to write to them in prison. You know, you can write to anybody in jail. I don't know if you, you knew that. Um, but, you know, wouldn't it be great for Hillary and Obama to be in jail? And then we can write to them every week and, and lecture them and, on what they did wrong. And, and I, would, I would just love that. In fact, we could, you know, you know Andrea has, uh, why is it you have stink of the week? We could have, um, you know, message of the week um, for Obama in jail and, and for Hillary in jail. I, I would I would absolutely uh, I would absolutely love that. Um, and that would be, you know, that would be a fair, fair commentary um, for me. Um, so I want to change the direction uh, just a little bit. Um, I want to talk a little bit um, about um the reinstitution of the travel ban um, that's been talked about. And, and I love that he's actually calling it a travel ban now. Um, but for me, how many of these instances um, of terror need to take place? You know, uh, these institute, inst ew, these instances of like what happened in London on, on Saturday night of, of a non-Christian uh, terrorist attack, because that's what we have to call it now, um, in order not to offend anybody. Uh, but we know it was, you know, Islamic uh, jihad is terror, because, you know, your average Catholic, you know, if they're going to kill someone, they don't go up to someone, slit their throat and say, Alu Akbar. Uh, you know, they, they just don't do that. Um, so I wonder, I, I'm going to come to you first, Julio, how many more of these incidents we need to see before we can have the major crackdown that's required um, on on preventing these things and dealing with people that are on terror watch lists rather than just saying, I don't want to be called an Islamophobe. Well, you know what? This boils down to what the left tries to do 
with a lot of things. They're normalizing the idea of it. You had London's mayor saying that, you know, that terrorism is a part of life in um, if you live in a major city. That's just like the perverts in California trying to normalize pedophilia, yeah. trying to decriminalize things that are horrendous to destroy lives. You know what? At this point, political correctness is the death of the city of London. It is. Too many attacks, too close in frequency, happening, too many lives being taken. It's time to take a stand against this because you know what the next big target is? It's going to be America. And if we don't rally around what our president is trying to do for us, you may be the next victim. Yes. I, I think as scary as it sounds, I think you're absolutely right. Um, but I just, I, it, it really infuriates me um, that, you know, if you live in New York City and you can't say, yes, put these in, you know, institute these things right away. You know, if you as a New Yorker can't say that after 9-11, after all the people we lost on 9-11, I, I, don't, I don't know what the answer is. What say you, Andrea? They're not just trying to normalize terror. They're also trying to normalize Sharia. I've been maintaining for a while that there's two forms of jihad. One is through the sword and one is through Sharia because it is a political ideology right. of conquest. And, there, and we have a movement in this country right now with Linda Sarsour as the poster woman for it to normalize Sharia, including female genital mutilation of little girls in this country. We need to be not allow ourselves to be silenced again. Had to to Courtney Love for pushing back against this woman, but, I, but Courtney Love fell a little bit short by not going all the way and actually attacking the religion of whether you, if we're not going to declare it a political ideology, if we're still going to consider it a religion, then we need to call it out. We should not be uh, tiptoeing around and not calling it out for what it is just because it's still considered a religion. Right. Would you agree with that, Julio? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last part. I feel like uh -huh. we need to... Um, we need to, they're trying to normalize. We've got two situations, two uh, acts of jihad. One is through the sword and one is through Shia. They're trying to normalize it here in this country. Of course, yeah, yeah no, and they're know, doing it behind the guise of political correctness. And that's kind of what I've been alluding to this entire time. That's the narrative. Are we going to sit here and pretend like that's not a problem? Are we going to sit there and go ahead and allow it to keep on happening? Are we going to keep on importing people who would kill us? And if we don't actually take a pronounced stand against it, if we don't do things like either what, what you want to call a travel ban, whether it's extreme vetting, whether it's stop halting immigration from certain countries, if we don't do those things, we're going to wind up just as bad as Germany and yep. London and France. And You're so right. The one for us to shed so much blood. But it just reminds me of that statement. I, I'm not sure who said it first, where, but it was, um, I'm probably paraphrasing, but it's something to the effect of if we don't learn from history, then we're doomed to repeat it. Uh, why can't we learn from what happened in France and Germany so it doesn't happen here? Exactly. Yeah. Club was the son of refugees. Right. There were refugees, the Sonaya brothers were refugees who, while under welfare, taxpayer assistance, flew to terrorist training camps and came back, and the Russians tried to warn us about them. Yeah. So we are at San Bernardino, that woman was born here on a fiancé visa through her immigration. So we kind of already have this happening here. And one of the things that bothered me after the London attack was all this talk about over there, over there, over there. What's London going to do? We already kind of have this starting here. Now is the time for us to stop it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, we are coming to the end of our time together. But before uh, we close, um, it was your birthday recently, Julio. So happy birthday to you. Um, how How is, because uh, Andrea and I are, are, are still like, you know, in our early 30s. We're just wondering what 40 looks like, aren't we? And I don't know. Yeah. It's pretty good from where I'm standing. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what it shapes up to be. A lot of exciting things are happening, and you know, life is changing, and we'll see where we go with things. And but I'm I'm very excited now um, to be 40. I guess. I mean, that's all I can say. I'm glad I made it. Uh, you know. Yeah, I have five years until I'm 40. Ha uh ha. -huh. Uh, but tell, but tell people, I'm so vain. Uh, tell people where they can find you uh, and tell them a little bit more about Reactionary Times. Yes, 
Reactionary Times TV, uh, debuting in a couple of weeks, uh, ReactionaryTimes.com. Check out to get all of your breaking news. And uh, you can read my blogs on Newsmax Right Wing News and Politichicks. And uh, you can find me on XRAD, apparently, uh, semi-regularly. Yes, uh, absolutely. And the Andrew Show. Oh, yes, for sure. Uh, and, Andrew, he's saying uh, you catch him pretty regularly on your show, too. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, it's hard for me to get Julio on very often because he's a busy boy, but as, as often as I can. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, make sure you go check uh, Julio out uh, at www.reactionarytimes.com. All of his information is on the XRAD Facebook show page for this week. Uh, thank you so much, Julio. Have a great week, sir. Uh, and I hope your uh, birthday celebrations are still um, active. Yes, uh, because it's my birthday month. So yes. I, I will enjoy it. For sure. Thanks, Julio. Bye-bye. Take care. Uh, that was Julio Rivera from ReactionaryTimes.com. Make sure you check him out um, on the Extrad Facebook show page and at ReactionaryTimes.com. Uh, thanks to my fabulous co-host, uh, the wonderful Andrea Kay from The Andrea Kay Show. Tell people um, where they can find more about you, Andrea, and more importantly, when they can listen to your show. Uh, my show is on Tuesdays. You can watch it on Facebook Live while I record it at the radio station, and then the radio station plays it at 6 p.m., Tuesday evening, so Facebook Live is 10 a.m. Pacific Time, and, and then it plays on the radio station at 6 p.m. Pacific Time. I'm here with Dan on Wednesday nights. Mondays, I'm on Tipping Point with Liz Wheeler on One America News. And my favorite night of the week is Wednesday, Dan and Ann. Absolutely. Have a great weekend. Uh, week, Andrea. I wish it was the weekend. That's wishful thinking. I, know, right? um, we will, I wish it was Friday. And um, we will speak to you again very soon. Thank you so much. Take care. Lots of love. That was the fabulous Andrea K. Make sure you check her out at www.andreakshow.com. Again, all of her contact information is on the XRED Facebook show page. Please press the share button. It is free. Share the show so we can get more people interested uh, and spread the word so we can possibly have a two-hour show. Press your share buttons now. I would just love for one person to press that share button. That would be fabulous. Uh, if you want to support the show, uh, you can buy the book, which is called The Boy from Beyond the Ice House. It's semi-autobiographical, and it's about little old me. Uh, you can buy my album, because I'm a singer too, uh, which is called The Platinum Prequel, and you can also donate to the show. I just shared uh, the links in there. Uh, thanks to everybody in the live feed for sharing. It's always a, a pleasure uh, to share with you. Uh, stay safe, stay warm, uh, or cool, uh, dependent on where you might be. We will be back to you, back with you tomorrow night. Uh, my co-host in for Swoop is uh, the wonderful Chet Martin from Freedom on Deck, and our guest uh, is our Israeli correspondent, uh, David Weissman. My brain just died. I need something to drink. I love you all. Bye-bye. Share the show. Yeah.